What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plan. Today I'm going to show you some new isopods that I just got. Let's check it out. All right, this is very atypical for Tech Plan because this is tech isopod kind of. Well, anyways, basically I made a trade with some lady at work and I got two species of isopods that I'm going to raise and try and make colonies with. Um, the first one is going to be the dairy cow species or I don't know if these are like cultivars or what they call them. And the other one is going to be the powder orange. Now, even though it doesn't seem like these are plant related, these are actually really awesome for terrariums. They're very good for breaking down dead material and a good cleanup crew for terrariums, vivariums, and many other enclosed uh, containers where you put animals or plants. So they are pretty useful to plant collectors and they're really cool. So now that I got this, I do have to build an enclosure for them basically. I want them to breed. I want to have a ton of them. Maybe I can sell them in the future. Who knows? But either way, I just want to make some colonies. So to start that off, we need a bin. It's much like a propagation bin, honestly, but I'll show you how it works. Isopods do not climb well, so usually a shallow bin is just fine. I'm more looking for like horizontal space. I don't really care much about vertical space. So these like wide and long flat containers are gonna work pretty darn good. I am not an expert with isopods, so I've just read a bunch of articles online. I've seen a few conflicting things, so I'm not really sure, but this is what I'm going with. I'm doing sphagnum moss, perlite, peat moss. There is gonna be some orchid wood. And later on, I will add some vermiculite because I'm hoping that the mineral content of that is something that might become available for the isopods. Some people have mentioned that perlite can be kind of sharp and it might damage the isopods, but I've also seen other people say it works just fine. So again, I'll see how it goes. But maybe if you do this at home, you could skip the perlite. For me, I don't really have any exact ratios. Even with my plants, I just eyeball it and feel it. And that generally is all I really need to do. I don't know if it's from just years of growing or whatever, but really what you want is some sort of substrate that's not gonna compact and get really hard. You want something that's loose and fluffy because these guys are gonna burrow around, crawl around and just do their thing. So you don't want something like mud because it's not gonna be very good for them. So yeah, it just mixes stuff up really good, really evenly. Um, in a lot of these isopod containers, I've heard that you need like a humidity gradient. So one side pretty wet and the other side a little more dry so they can kind of do their thing. So this is going to be my more wet component because it's got a lot of peat moss and sphagnum moss in there. So it's going to hold water. For the more dry side, well, it's not going to be dry at first, but it will dry out a little bit. And that's where I'm going to put my ventilation. I am just mixing some uh, orchid bark, sphagnum moss, some perlite. That's going to be really loose, and so it's going to dry out a lot quicker just because more air can get in there. So they'll be able to crawl around this stuff a lot easier. So I'm just going to do kind of a three quarters, one quarter thing, if that makes any sense, because I don't really have a half and half setup. Also, something I noticed much later, be careful with the edges. Don't stack it up too high. These lids on these cheap containers aren't perfect, and there is some gaps in certain areas. So just make sure the substrate doesn't go all the way to the lip because your colony will escape. I mean, these guys are pretty curious, and they really crawl everywhere, and they will find the escape routes. So just make sure you have like an inch or so of just plastic where they can't climb out. Lastly, I knew they needed some sort of leaf litter, so I went in my yard and got a lot of maple leaves. There's a few other species that I guess do pretty well. I looked this up beforehand and people said it was fine, mostly thinner leaves, and then I boiled them for a little bit because I don't want to introduce a bunch of weird mites or other critters into these uh, containers, so I wanted a more sterile thing. So anytime you take stuff from outside, try and find a way to sterilize it a little bit only because you can drag in undesirables and then you're going to have to struggle to try and get rid of them. So that's pretty much it for the substrate. I just have my leaves layered on top of the more wet stuff. That'll also help trap in moisture. So they've got their wet gradient and their airy dry area. So this should be pretty good for them. So now it's time to just introduce them, which is really just dumping them in there and letting them colonize and do their little thing. It is best if you do put some sort of ventilation on your lids. You can melt holes with like a hot nail that you heat up on the stove or something. Obviously use a wrench to hold it so you don't burn yourself. There's a lot of different ways to cut air holes in this thing. Just make sure it's like above them and they can't crawl through the holes. Some people have even like cut larger holes in hot glued screen. I'm working on a 3D printed option so it's not quite ready yet but I still want to release this video of just my isopods. So I'll work on that and probably do an update. I'm just starting with these two species. Um, I got lucky that I was able to trade with somebody at work. 
and so we'll see how it goes you know i'm not an expert with isopods but hopefully i can get good colonies going very strong ones and if i do i'll invest in some more exotic ones because i'll have more confidence it's all about starting slow and experimenting and so hopefully things go well i almost left out one important step and that is feeding these guys the lady that i got these from at work she feeds them a lot of like table scraps just you have to make sure it's like organic or there's no way there's pesticide on there because it will kill off your colony but anyways like lettuces and vegetables they can usually eat that kind of stuff but again make sure it's organic i'm using some shrimp pellets that i use in my shrimp tanks i figured they're pretty close in i guess what they are isopods shrimp all they're all kind of similar so it should work and i'm going to give it some cabbage and some other stuff well guys, it pretty much sums up this video. I hope you liked it and I hope that you might find a new interest in isopods. You should definitely Google these things because there is a huge variety out there and you might find some that you really like. Well guys, I hope you like this and you look forward to future updates on these isopods. And as always, may your plants grow strong and healthy and maybe your isopods stay healthy. I'll see you next time.